We all remember when the 18th Amendment was passed and barrels of alcohol were smashed in the street. But with the ratification of the 21st Amendment, say goodbye to sneaking around to get a drink. Let's have a quick review of the popular drinking spaces from less than three years ago and what went on inside of them. The speakeasies of the 1920s were a huge part of cultural development and the general mood of this era. Not only did famous jazz performers make their name through the clubs throughout New York City and Harlem, but also everyone from famous actors to the average American would save up to attend one of these secret clubs. However, getting into a club was not that easy. This was due to the illegalities and police always looking to shut down another speakeasy. To get into one of the clubs, you had to know someone who was already attending or had to know the owner. Many clubs had passwords that were spoken through a small door before you were allowed to enter the facility, hence the name Speakeasy. The clubs were all over New York City, as well as being in other large northern cities such as Chicago and Detroit. Although Speakeasies were fun for adults to attend, there were also many dangers that came with attending them. The shutting down of Speakeasies was fairly common. But major clubs had many ways to escort patrons the, through the back entrances or tunnels to avoid being caught, which led to more famous clubs staying open throughout the entire Prohibition era. But that was not the only danger of attending speakeasies. Many clubs were run by dangerous mobsters and gangsters, such as Al Capone, who pulled in approximately $60 million per year with his Chicago Mafia. This led to the skyrocketing violence rates during the Prohibition era. Now, how did these clubs get alcohol into a country where it was illegal to make, sell, and distribute? That was done through bootleggers uh, who would make extremely watered-down alcohol and sell it at very expensive prices. This meant that even when you found a place to drink in a speakeasy, it was always very expensive and the product was not even that great. The speakeasies of the 20s were such a major part of the culture during Prohibition that everyone from your average person to a famous actor could be found drinking behind their doors. For most people, the advantages of attending speakeasies tended to outweigh the dangers, which is what kept so many of them open and constantly filled with customers. The most famous and well-liked speakeasies stayed open throughout the Prohibition era. Although speakeasies were a very important and loved part of the 1920s, a person could never attend one of these clubs without being at least slightly nervous of being caught. But now the year is 1933, and the 21st Amendment has been ratified, ending the ban on alcohol. We can now say goodbye to the bootlegged watery alcohol, and hello to drinking free once again.